Have you checked out Change Cars yet? That's the website where you can find your next car because they only list cars from franchise dealers, giving you total peace of mind. That's changecars.co.za. The new generation Citroen C3 was launched a month ago in South Africa. We were at the launch. There is a video on the channel. You can check it out. But what's very interesting is with most manufacturers, as they bring a new generation of cars, they always seem to grow in dimensions, in spec, in size, in everything. Citroen have done the opposite with us. The new C3 is a bit smaller, got lots of spec, but downsized and downpriced, and that's critical. But let's take a look quickly over here. Of course, it's got the typical Citroen logo at the front, almost in 3D these days, like everybody else, the clamshell bonnet, as they call it. It's got the lovely little daytime running lights across the top. Good headlights over there, you can see. And people have argued with me on this point, but I think this is not just a B-segment hatch. This fits into the crossover SUV segment. You can disagree with me if you want. There's only one model in the range as well, so there are no options, which is quite interesting what Citroen have chosen to do. But you can see the cladding, of course, over the wheel arches and down the side of the car. What I'm saying about the crossover SUV with 180 mils of ground clearance. 15-inch wheels over here. You can see them. They look pretty good. Nothing wrong with them at all. And they do the job nicely. They create a nice, comfortable ride. There is the roof rack effect on top over here chilly chilly high felt morning we're filming on as you can see so lots of frost around but let's just pop open the back door quickly and let me tell you that while I jump in quickly because I want to show you the space in the back the back seat is set pretty high yet I still have room with my hat on and the driver's seat is set for myself I'm pretty impressed with this leg room there's something else over here. Just bring the camera right in. For a car at this end of the market, two USBs at the back. Yes, I repeat, two. And there are the controls for the rear windows. Different, unusual, but who cares? It doesn't do any harm, and I think it does the job nicely. But certainly spacious for this category of car and this segment. And that is what counts along the way, isn't it? Come round to the rear, and you can see interesting tail lights over there. And what is important down the line, if unfortunately ever need repairs, is note the tail lights are not part split into the tailgate and into the C panel. And that can make a difference if you ever need to repair. You pop open the boot, it's got a pretty high loading lip, so you'll have to heft things over, sure, but I don't think that's a hardship. And you've got a, yes, I'm double checking, I'm triple checking. You've actually got a full size spare wheel in. Well, I'm looking again. It's not quite a full size, but it's certainly not just a Mari biscuit, but the spare wheel is there. Your rear seat does fold forward, but it's in a single piece. Well, I don't think you can complain about that too much either. C3 is powered by a 1.2 litre three cylinder petrol engine giving you 61 kilowatts, 115 newton meters of torque, and you've got a five speed manual gearbox. Only option at this stage driving the front wheels. Let's check it out. For a small city car, the C new C2 really is an absolute pleasure. It's smooth, it's comfortable, the ride is typically French. What more do I need to say to you than that? But the little one litre three cylinder engine. It's buzzy. Of course it's buzzy. That's what three-cylinder engines are meant to be. They're meant to be buzzy. So you've got a little bit of engine buzz, but it's fun. It's nice. The gear shift, the clutch are light as you'd expect. And it really is a nice city car, as I said. Yeah, out on the open road, well, you can make up your own mind on that part. And you can decide for yourself. But I think I could even do a trip in it. We did take it through to Hearties through our favorite route and it really was quite acceptable nice and light on fuel but just overall the five-speed gearbox you don't need more than a five-speed on a little engine like this that's for sure 61 kilowatts 115 newton meters of torque for a small car like this that's plenty as well 
But the nice thing is the handling is so light, so easy, and it certainly feels quicker than it is as well, which is a nice feature as far as I'm concerned. And around suburbia, it's an absolute doddle to drive. It's light on fuel, it's easy, it's pleasant, it's comfortable. It's all those things you always want from your little car, don't you? So all I can say is that the driving position's good, the driver's seat is comfortable, it's light, it's easy. And look, look at this, I'm in third gear, up the hill, as you know we always use nowadays, and it certainly is, whoopsie, maybe going, maybe there's a bit of body roll <laughs> when you try and corner a bit faster than you could. But again, it's all within reason. And there is just that little bit more space than you expect from a car in this category and most importantly, in this price range. And much was criticized at the launch when I said, this is more a crossover SUV than just a B-segment hatchback. I repeat that. And I stick by that. That 180 mils of ground clearance to me makes a difference. Let's see our favorite three-point turn spot. Well, one of the tightest turning circles I've come across in a while. There you go. It really, to me, I'm unashamedly going to tell you, I think it sneaks into the crossover SUV category out of the little hatchback category. Jumping in behind the wheel, let's look at the crucial figures, of course, like we always do. We've done 330 kilometers so far on this test, and there's one of those little old-fashioned push buttons over here to change your different readings on the screen. So let's go through and have a look. 6.3 liters per hundred. Well, okay. Now, considering that we did our drive to Harties, and then the rest of this test was all urban driving, and oops, I let Leadfoot get his hands on this one. So that could have affected things as well. 6.3, but as an overall figure, I think that's pretty good anyway. And, and I can tell you now, you will get figures like this from this car. But you've got, it's a quite a neat reading over there. You've got all your other warning lights, etc. around you there. You would expect it. You've got a couple of buttons on your steering wheel over here for answering your phone and your volume and source, etc. So those are all pretty standard, and I'm sure you'd expect it. But of course, one of the features of the C3 has to be this 10-inch infotainment screen. And that button there, I'm not going to press it now, but that's important because you've even got wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I repeat, wireless on a car at this end of the market. That is quite something. You have a look over here. The air vents, aren't they typical Citroen that they have to be square? Like every other Citroen of recent times that square effect i just think it looks good your aircon controls over here very important one usb over there and a 12 volt up front and very neatly done a couple of different shelves and compartments for your cell phone for things like that and a couple of cup holders which i found very useful your gear lever here i mentioned it's a five speed manual only at this stage there is talk there would be an auto option coming one of these days Let's see when it does. But a nice gear lever holds nicely, nice and ship light, etc., etc. Come across to the dash now. And also, typically, you've got this roll effect that a lot of Citroens have had over in the recent past. Now, depending on how funky you want to be in your lifetime, you can choose this in the grey as it is in this car, or even in an orange which you'll either love or you'll hate, it's up to you. But those are the choices you get. So there you go. I mean, it's Citroen. You expect things like this from Citroen, don't you? And that's where it comes in. Well, I've mentioned a number of times that I think this is not just a B-segment hatch, and I repeat myself there. But what Citroen South Africa have done with this little car is the price. They've brought it in at 229900 now, in the South African market, that is unbelievable right now and quite exceptional. And again, I say it's got more space. The rear, you saw how much room there is in the rear when I got in the rear. Got comfortable cloth seats, typically French, slightly softer cloth seats. Height adjustment on the driver's seat as well, if you want that. So it's got all these sort of features at that price. And it is, in my book, bigger and higher than just a B-segment hatch. You want my closest comparison in the market? And I had to think long and hard to come up with one. 
Suzuki Swift would come very close. And all the figures are very similar between those two as well. So it's quite interesting. It really is. Comes with a two-year, 30,000-kilometer service plan as well. So there you go. All those factors must come in when you're looking at a car. I know Citroen is a brand that people have had question marks over for a long time. I'll say to you, if you're shopping at this end of the market, this price range, and you want something a bit different and a little bit funky, and I use that word deliberately, this is a car I would certainly go and take a look at. All Motor Matters, I'm Eleanor. See you next time.